Hi, so I've been keeping commonplace books throughout my PhD and I just finished my previous one and I'm gonna start writing in a new one quite soon. And I thought this would be the perfect time to kind of teach you how I keep my commonplace book and what I write in it and how I found that it benefited me throughout my PhD. So a commonplace book is a personalized collection of quotes, observations and knowledge gathered from various sources over time. It serves as a reference, memory aid and a tool for reflection, allowing individuals to revisit and contemplate accumulated wisdom and insights. Traditionally kept in a notebook form, its contexts are organized thematically or according to personal preference. So people have kept commonplace books throughout history. One of the first people that you may know that has kept a commonplace book is Marcus Aurelius. So in his renowned work Meditations, a cornerstone of Stoic philosophy, it originated as a personal compilation of notes, reflections and quotes. And if you haven't read Meditations, I would definitely try to read it because I personally really like when you read it, it kind of feels as if it's quite a modern form of text because Stoic philosophy is still quite relevant even in the current day and age. But also other people have kept commonplace books. So for example, you have Leonardo da Vinci, Isaac Newton and Thomas Jefferson. They all kept some form of notebook that helped them reflect on certain ideas and help them in their creative pursuits. And so that's why I would argue that every one of us should have a commonplace book to help us get our thoughts and really reflect on certain ideas that we have. So maybe you have seen online that a lot of people keep their commonplace books or their second brain, as some people call it, on, for example, apps like Notion or Evernote. However, I also really like to have a commonplace book in a paper format and that's because I find it a little bit more creative and a lot more personal and that is because on a paper format I find that you can for example also use other forms of reflection such as drawing. So how to start your commonplace book? So first of all you need to select the right medium. So I personally found throughout my years as a PhD student and also a student before that that I really like the bullet journal style and I think because a bullet journal is the most blank canvas almost you can get without having a totally blank space and I find that it allows for a lot of like creative thoughts and that you can really fill it in however you like and um, personally I always just buy a really cheap bullet journal so this one was from Flying Tiger and I think it was something like four euros and it really serves its purpose so I write different things in my commonplace book. I kind of use it as a lab notebook for example so every time I do any type of experiment I usually write down what kind of ideas I'm having throughout the experiment and also what went wrong and this usually really works if you're doing a lot of experiments simultaneously to reflect back on what went wrong during certain periods but also what you tried. So sometimes if you're working on something for a year you kind of forget the type of reflections you had throughout an experiment and the type of things you learned and I usually just note this down as I'm programming, as I'm going through my day in the lab. And I really found that over the years, these notebooks become really golden in the sense that the type of reflections I had throughout experiments you cannot really find anywhere else online and they are only in my personal notebook. Another thing that I do is that I track throughout the day the type of output I have. And especially for a PhD because your goals are so fuzzy, it's kind of demotivating sometimes that you really have a sense that you accomplish nothing. So something that I track is the amount of pages I write throughout the day and my goal is kind of like five pages and by doing this I kind of see that on average I'm between three and six pages every day and I do see that I have some type of output even on days that I feel really unproductive or that I only made experiments that really failed. So I think having something that you can track over multiple days that kind of motivates you is for me really helpful as well. I also track what gives me energy throughout the day. This is a tip I learned to kind of see which part of your job you really like. And something I noticed is that, for example, I really like teaching students and I really like giving courses, but doing administrative work, I really dread. So that really drains my energy. So now I try to throughout the day in periods that I'm a little bit tired, I try Try to plan things that give me energy and I try to avoid things that drain my energy and I think by tracking this throughout the day I got a better insight in what actually it is about a PhD that I really enjoy.
enjoy doing. So another few things that I do are like, I have certain markers and this is more from the bullet journal style. So I use a brain when I have a new idea or I hear some idea that I think like, oh, I should really work on this during my PhD. I use um, exclamation mark for things that I have to do quite soon and that are quite important. And then I use a heart for personal thoughts. So I also write in this commonplace book, personal thoughts or feelings that I have. And throughout my life, I've tried journaling in a really set specific style, but I noticed that I always fell off the wagon. Whereas like just writing it throughout my science thoughts actually helps me reflect a lot more on what I'm feeling as well. And that's because personally for me, science and emotions or these kind of things aren't really separated. They're all just intertwined in my daily life. So just writing it down in my commonplace book allows me to reflect on certain feelings that I'm having as well. So in general, I found that there are certain benefits of having a commonplace book. One of the most obvious ones is that it really helps me clear out my scientific ideas. So usually I also draw my scientific ideas. I reflect on my scientific ideas. And I really found throughout the years that having a commonplace book really helps you clarify what you want to do in science and also has, helps you get over certain hurdles. Because sometimes you feel you're really stuck and then leaving through my commonplace book, I kind of find different ideas or solutions to my own problems. Because a lot of times I've reflected beforehand on certain problems that I could encounter throughout my scientific career. Another way that I found it really helpful is to combine certain creative ideas. So I also write down if I find really nice quotes or if I see a beautiful painting or something like this. And it really allows me to make quite creative connections between different fields, which I don't really think is possible unless you have a commonplace book like this. And the biggest advantage that I found is that it also allows you to have a conversation with your past self. So if you've kept commonplace books, or notebooks throughout a long period of time and I revisit them once I've finished one and then I also usually revisit older ones so that's about once every six months I go through my old commonplace books and it really feels like having a conversation with your past self because you see in which areas you have grown but you also see which parts of you are consistent throughout your life so something that I've been working on consistently throughout my PhD is really this work-life balance and whenever I revisit old notebooks, I always see that I'm continuously working on this and that this always stays a struggle. Like there are periods of stress where I get really sucked into science and do almost nothing else. And always when I read my hard thoughts during those days, it's always like, I should rest more. I should have a better work-life balance and these kind of things. And it is really reflective to see that this thought never really goes away. And I think as a student and as a PhD student, this is just a struggle. That is part of the job. So this was just a really short video on how I kept a commonplace book. And I would love to hear if you are keeping a commonplace book, how you do it, what kind of thoughts you write in it, what kind of things you collect in it, or if you're doing it online, what kind of benefits you find from having it online. And if you're interested in productivity or these kind of things, I would definitely try this video next and otherwise see you next week. Bye.